think there was bombs set in the building. Well, Louis Cacciola isn't the only firefighter who claims that there were explosives or demolition charges going off in and around the World Trade Center. We made it at least two blocks, two blocks. and we started running. Floor by floor, it started popping out. It was, like, it was if, if, if they had detonated. Yeah, it was detonated. Like they were planned yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. All the way down. I was watching. Now, we've seen numerous reports of explosions, bombs, possible demolition charges, a pancake collapse of the towers. But have we seen any footage anything that might support these particular allegations. And these allegations come from firefighters and officials that were at the scene and were in a position to know. Well, there is one very interesting piece of footage that was broadcast on CNN Live while they were interviewing Tom Clancy. And the amazing thing is this footage was shown once and never seen again. Let's take a look. Now, as we look at this footage, the first thing that we want to note is that both towers are still standing. The sun had just risen in New York. It was 9.30 in the morning. So the camera is looking from the west towards the east and the smoke is being blown towards Brooklyn or away from the camera to the southeast. This gives you a clear view of the left side or north side of the towers in the Trade Center area. If you follow the left tower all the way down to the street level, you'll notice that you can see all the way down to the buildings below. Now the question is, if both towers are still standing and the smoke is being blown away from the towers, what is this huge plume of smoke approximately 50 to 60 stories high rising from the Trade Center area? This footage was shown once live and never repeated as I've already said. Why were we never shown this footage again and why has this event never been brought to the attention of the American public or the world? This is a critical event. It was never discussed or examined because it is inconsistent with a simple attack of planes slamming into towers. How could this plume of smoke be rising from the base of the towers if neither one of the towers had collapsed? There's one more important point to make when viewing this particular piece of video footage, and that is that the rising plume of smoke appears to be occurring to the north and west of the Trade Center area. Question, is there any other photographic evidence that might show an explosion or a plume of smoke that occurred to the north and west of the Trade Center towers before the collapse? We've heard eyewitness accounts and testimony from fire officials that indicate that there were bombs, explosives, possibly detonating charges that were utilized in the collapse of the World Trade Center buildings. Is there any reason to believe that detonating charges were utilized in the collapse of the North Tower, the South Tower, or Building 7? One firefighter did say, boom, 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 that's how it went down. And many of the television reporters reported that as the buildings collapsed, both the North Tower and the South Tower and Building 7, they all appeared to come down just like a controlled demolition. Let's listen to a clip from Larry Silverstein. He was the lease owner of the World Trade Center as he gave an interview on PBS. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. And I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. About an hour ago, World Trade Center building number seven collapsed, a 42-story building weakened by the devastation that had occurred earlier today. We've all seen controlled demolitions on television, office buildings, sports stadiums, all brought down by controlled charges. And these charges and controlled demolitions take weeks of planning. They have to bring in experts and do a structural analysis of the buildings, study which beams, which girders have to have charges placed on them. And then a team of explosive experts has to come and set the charges, wire them all together in sequence. And then, finally, after everything is clear, they let the building go or pull it. Are we to believe that eight hours after a surprise attack in New York City, they were able to pull Building 7? How is this possible? 
had it not been planned in advance. And if they did have planned detonation charges in place in building number seven, is it possible that there were charges in building six or five or four or the North Tower or the South Tower? We made it at least two blocks, two blocks and we started one. Floor by floor, it started popping out. It was, like, it was if, if they had detonated. Yeah, yeah it was detonated. Like they were planned yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. All the way down. I was watching ran. it and running. Yeah. Just ran. Ladies and gentlemen, so far we've seen that we were deceived, if not flat out lied to, about many of the events of September 11th. From the controversy about whether or not Flight 77 actually hit the Pentagon, to whether or not there were bombs or explosives or detonating charges utilized in any of the buildings that collapsed in the World Trade Center. And also, Larry Silverstein making the admission that when it came to Building 7, they made the decision to pull it. And now we come to the main events of September 11th, North and South Towers being hit by airliners that were supposedly hijacked by terrorists. Let's take a look at some of the clips that we've all seen over and over again. On April 15th of 2004, we received a news release that alerted us to a website that was entitled www.letsroll911.org. Phil Jahan, the webmaster for this website, had taken the video clips that you've just seen and slowed them down and examined them frame by frame, and what he found was astounding. There are several different anomalies that need to be examined and questioned. First of all, what is attached to the bottom of the plane that hit the South Tower? And second of all, what is that brief flash that occurs just as the plane makes impact? Now, when we first looked at this video footage, I said to myself, well, this video footage could very well be manipulated. So I wanted to check it out myself. Well, we went and found the DVD that we had purchased shortly after September 11th entitled America Remembers. This was directly from CNN. We took this DVD and put it in our machine and examined the very clip that you've just seen. Let's take a look at it. Let's take another look at this clip in slow motion, but before we do, keep in mind that sometimes the best place to hide something is in plain sight. We've all seen this video clip, and there have been many publications that have taken frames from this video and published them in hundreds of magazines. Here's an example. On page three, a full-size blow-up of this picture. And in this magazine, it was published on page four. And on the back of this book that we discussed earlier, it's on the back cover. I suggest you all take a copy of your magazines and books, and if you have the video footage, take a good hard look. We've all got this. Now let's take a look at this in slow motion. As the plane approaches the South Tower, notice carefully the belly of the plane there appears to be something attached, and just as it hits the building, there's a flash. Let's take another look in super slow motion. Now let's take another good hard look at this video footage. As the plane approaches, it is irrefutable that there is something attached to the bottom of this plane and a distinct flash as it makes contact. Now there are some that would say that this is a trick of light, a reflection. Well, let's keep in mind that if you hold a mirror in your hand and reflect the sun's rays, that reflection only goes where you aim that reflection. So a reflection should only be seen from one particular angle. Let's take a look at this event from another angle. And now let's take a look at it again from a third angle. And now let's take a look at it one more time from a fourth angle. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just seen a very interesting event indeed. Not recorded by one, but recorded by four different cameras from four different angles. There can be no doubt 
that this is not the result of a reflection of any sort.